This is called The Unseen Thief. Well, shit. Your father is dying. He's been dying for almost a year now, ever since his trip to Europe last spring, but this time he's really dying, like for real. And this wasn't what you expected it to be like at all. Your dentist tells you there are two options. Try another root canal or do an extraction. He assures you that neither will be enjoyable. Both will be expensive. The first thought to cross your mind, I'll ask Dad what he thinks. The second thought, I can't ask Dad what he thinks. You meditate on the fact that it's raining outside, that Mount Tam is hidden under a thick blanket of fog. You know it's there somewhere, you just can't see it right now. That you're having an affair with your mostly straight dentist. <laughs> and that it may very well be the tackiest thing you've ever done. <laughs> and you've done a lot of tacky things. I'll see you at seven, you tell him. Then, without another word, you get up, you go. On the car ride home, you wonder, was the partner a gelding or a mare? A gelding, you decide. No, a mare. Your mother sends you an email. She regrets that your father never had an opportunity to pursue any creative endeavors in his life. She writes, I think he felt so defined, maybe trapped in his role of father, provider. He has given up so much of his youthful, creative self in taking on that socially described role. When he was just a child, he wanted to take piano lessons. He gave up that dream when he overheard his parents talking about how they were going to afford the mortgage. Your dad's dreams and talents went on the back burner. There were so many talents he never had a chance to, de to develop. Instead, he devoted his energies to academe and earning a living and taking care of us. He was interested in creative writing, and he really is a fine writer. But that also fell by the wayside. He sent a story to the New Yorker once. Her email makes you want to die a little. You too sent a story to the New Yorker once. The only difference was yours was accepted. Your mother irks you. Your mother irks a lot of people. Your mother irks your father. That's why he left her for another woman. Your greatest fear is that one day you'll end up just like her irksome and impossible and alone. Well, shit, your father can't die. You don't know him well enough yet. You check online. Your life expectancy is 74 years old. 48 years without him seems like too many. 18, fine. 28, okay. 38, maybe. But 48, too much can happen in 48 years. You probably shouldn't have started sleeping with your dentist, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> it always seems like a good idea at the time. You're not emotionally invested in the relationship. He's your dentist, after all. <laughs> and aside from your teeth and an immediate sexual attraction toward one another, you feel that the two of you have very little, if anything, in common. You fear feeling this way makes you an unkind person. But your friend Nicolay, one drunken night at Smitty's in Sausalito assured you that given the catastrophic events of last November, which you still haven't even begun to process yet, you needn't concern yourself with things like other people's feelings. <laughs> You've a year, he slurred while sipping his vodka tonic by the pool table, to do whatever you please without any repercussion. One year. Sometimes you think you're the most pathetic person you know, but a lot of people's parents have died and they seem to do just fine afterward. But for some reason, it feels different for you, even though you know it's not. Even though you know you're just like everybody else. You pour yourself a glass of wine. You go to the bookshelf. You reread The Partner's Tale, Larry Benson's translation. It always was your favorite one. The story is about three self-destructive men who set out to kill the unseen thief, otherwise known as death only to die themselves in the process. You wonder briefly what that process, about that process and what it might be like to kill death. You wonder briefly about Chaucer and if he was INTJ too. <laughs> you wonder briefly whether you should do the root canal or the extraction. Then you check the clock. It's almost seven. You close the book, you get up, you go. Thank you.